Sell me an M3 door, please. I need one. Watch it out for me, Zoe. Well, well, not anymore. Yes! Oh, let's put this bad boy on the car. All right, I did an introduction for this video yesterday. Explained why the door's black or how we got to the door being black, but I hadn't had a haircut and I was feeling pretty average. So there was no energy in it and I decided I'm gonna do it again. So here we are. The plan is for this episode, get this door black. This is a E30 door. I need an E30 M3 door. So if you've got a right hand side door for an E30 M3, let me know. The reason why we're doing the door is we are going to have to take off this front fender, put on the brand new one that we've got, because I don't think I'm gonna use these. Take this off, gap the front fender, gap the door, because I believe, well, I think the rear quarter is gonna show up this week. There was a whole bunch of drama with the first time it was sent, Getting things out of German customs when they're over a thousand euro is complicated and convoluted. It's been resent through a third party distributor and Lawrence, thank you. I don't think I get this panel if you didn't help. I also want to say thank you to Mark Philp from Adelaide BMW. I know how hard you tried and I'm, I'm really glad we got the outcome we both wanted. I'm going to discuss more about this Lawrence character later on in this episode because if you're looking hard to find E30 parts, you need to contact this bloke. There are so many scammers everywhere, really. Like I wanted to say the E30 scene, but like the Jumbuck scene's full of scammers as well. So beware of scammers, they're everywhere. So the door is the door that came off the car. I stripped some parts off of it, sanded it back. <laughs> and then dropped it off to Eden and got it just primed in black. Again, sell me an M3 door, please. I need one. Now that I've filled you in and I've done a little bit more energetic kind of uh, introduction, let's get the fenders off. Gap, gap, prep, panel. <laughs> You'll know by the end of this episode, but currently, right now as I sit here, I don't know if it is coming in. These are the packers for the door. There are two different kinds of hinges for an E30. There are basically the good ones and the bad ones. This is an early model E30, so these are the bad ones. This one's gonna be a struggle, but we will get there. All right, it's gonna be easier to do without the front fender on. I did not breathe enough just then. Doors on. Woo! Okay. It's that easy, eh? I'm gonna move the camera so you can see the positions that I have to get into to try and support the door as I undo the nuts. I need to put the front fender on. I don't know if I need to move it from there. That was like one adjustment. Yippee! Down the bottom, up the top. It's getting bigger up the top. Close it at the top and probably open it at the bottom. Let's go look at the other side. So then you can kind of see what we're trying to match to try and get the gaps correct. See that? That's a good gap, top to bottom. So that's what we're trying to match. Now, actually thinking about it, I think that's a shim issue, not a position issue. With these doors, they have shims behind the top and the bottom hinge. And if you think about the plane of where this is sitting, this is sitting flat. So if we take out a couple of these shims, it, the door should sit closer to the fender. Let's give that a go. Completely wrong. 
Don't listen to me. Always fact check. The shims move the door in and out. I swapped them over. The top is pretty much spot on. The bottom, there was four shims. I've removed three. Three. And now that's nice and level there. I've got to get this line right, this line right, face correct, top and bottom, and then this gap down here correct, along with this gap up here correct. So we now have, oh, I'm gonna sit on a screwdriver. A door, how sick is that? This is Zoe. This is uh, the mechanics dog. Everyone say hi to Zoe. Now we've got a door. And everyone knows, if you've got a door, you've got a gym. You got a door, you got a gym. Check it out. Get bigger, harder, and stronger. You get up to 200 pounds of explosive resistance. No dumbbells, no machines, no memberships. You want bicep curls, shoulder press, crunches, squats, no problem. You're ready to get crazy. Check out the mother of all workouts. This workout is insane. Let's go, princess. It's really starting to feel like a car again, because you can like shut doors and you've got seats to sit on and like a steering wheel. I do need to put the pedal box in, but I've got to modify one of my modifications to get the pedal box in. Watching out for me, Zoe? Well, well, not anymore. Now I've got to go to my bottle shop job, but hopefully panel gets delivered to BMW Adelaide today and I'm picking it up tomorrow morning. You're gonna know already because the thumbnail is gonna have it either attached or like sitting next to it. Me, right now? I got no idea. It went from Germany to France to Singapore to New South Wales in like 48 hours. And it's just sat in New South Wales for the last 48 hours. So I don't know what the hell's going on with it. it. It won't update the tracking number, but hopefully something happens soon. I'm going gray over here. I got gray chest hairs, but my hairline's receding. It all seems like fun and games building this car, but like the amount of time and effort and stress that has been generated because this panel doesn't want to rock up. Whew. Not enjoyable. The rest of the car, great fun. All right, I gotta go to work. All right, the door's on. The gaps are looking good. This gap's a little bit thin down here, but that's because you can move the panel in and out. Also got this gap down here, looks good. Next step is we need to clean up where all of the spot welds go for the rear quarter. That's all prepped. The last step before we can really go forward with putting the panel on is these panels have separated. I've got to clean it back, remove the wheel, remove the strut, Spot welded, stitch welded, cleaned. Clean the rest of the inside of the wheel arch, so that's kind of done. I can put it all back together, and now we're ready for the panel to come in. I just got a call. The panel's in. We're gonna go pick it up. I'm gonna try and explain how shitty this whole process was and why the panel finally coming in is a huge step. Let's go get it. In 2022, I went into Adelaide BMW and I asked them to check if they were gonna be able to order me M3 front fenders and rear quarters. Matt, thank you very much. They got back to me and said, yep, 100%. If you order them, we'll be able to deliver them and you'll get them January 2023. It's way past January 2023. There was some back and forth, went in January 2023, nothing. Matt checked with BMW head office or wherever he needed to, and they were like, oh, just two weeks, 
two weeks and they'll be in. Two weeks passed, nothing. It got to the point where it was April and I received both front fenders. Still no rear quarters. A couple months later, I received the left-hand rear quarter, which is the one that you've all seen on the car. And then from there, they just kept saying, two weeks. Oh, the camera. I'm gonna need to pull over. <laughs> Try that again, eh? Where was I? I'd call once a week, once every two weeks and go, hey, just checking in, wondering if there's any news on when the panel's coming in. And Matt at BMW Adelaide did as much as he could, but he could only convey what BMW head office were telling him. And they just kept saying, it'll be in next week. It'll be in two weeks. Give it a month and it'll be in. Uh, and there wasn't much I could do. Got to about November, 2023. And I, I said to Matt, look, I need to escalate this complaint because I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. And I've put all of my money into this car and the channel to the point where if I don't finish this car and if the channel doesn't grow, I've wasted a, a butt ton of money. But at the same time, this was the dream. This was the goal to build cars for YouTube, to build weird one-off cars. And like, I'm, I'm glad I made the decision but at the same time, if I had known that this panel would take this long to come in, I don't know if I would have started with this car. I think I might have started with something a little bit safer, something that is a little bit easier to get parts for because E30 M3 panels is difficult. So I escalated the complaint. I eventually got in touch with the head of BMW Adelaide. He did everything he could. He did his research, looked into it, and about four weeks after I made the complaint, he called me up and he said, look, from what I'm hearing from BMW, Adelaide, uh, BMW head office, you're just gonna get it when you get it. They haven't even made the panel yet. Suck it up. And uh, that's the last time I cried. And before that, I don't know when I have previously. Oh when I put my dog down, that's right. Um, because of the time, money and effort, like this is all I think about. That like meme where there's a couple laying in bed and the girl's sitting there going, what's wrong with him? He hasn't spoken to me all day. And all he is doing thinking about why his motorbike doesn't start or his car isn't running, that's me. That's me, like all the time. All I do is think about what panel I need to get to make the tub work, what brakes I should be running, how I should be making a short, when I should be releasing the short, what thumbnail I need to use to get the best reaction. And like, it is a gigantic rabbit hole. This entire YouTube, like I've, I'm slowly learning about the algorithm, but at the same time, I have no idea. My brain hurts sometimes. And it's a good thing, like it's a, I wanna learn more, how do I learn more, but it can be exhausting. When that happened and Mark called me and told me that I just have to wait, I think he understood the severity of the situation. He messaged head office, emailed head office again and said, all right, well, which dealerships in Germany have a panel in stock and there were three dealerships he got in touch with one of them and said can we purchase it and there was translations back and forward but there was a breakdown in translation because what that dealership well no what mark or adelaide bmw thought they said was we won't organize shipping but what they actually meant was we won't do an absolute thing we won't help with customs we won't help with any paperwork and German customs is convoluted and complicated. So if your part or whatever you're sending is over a thousand euros, you have to send a sad form. And my God, the irony is painful. Um, single administrative document. 
which says what it is, how big it is, how much it's worth, uh, and it's a super simple document, but it has to be sent. Adelaide BMW organized the shipping, got it picked up, and then it never cleared customs because it didn't have this one document. It got dropped back off at the dealership, but the dealership never said anything. They went completely cold. They wouldn't respond to any emails anywhere. Eventually someone did, but it wasn't really useful. And that's where Lawrence from Classic BMW Center comes in. This bloke is an absolute champion. With the amount of scam pages there are, if you're looking for hard to find BMW parts for like old BMWs, get in contact with him. He will find them and he will sell them to you. I got in contact with him. He called up the dealership and got in contact with the person who sold the panel and they said, yeah, no, we sold it to them. And we said we would not do anything to do with customers. Customs. Then he was like, Lawrence said, well, what if it just, what if it gets to Australia and can't clear customs? It could go to auction. Customers purchase something and just never receives it. And the bloke said, no, 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 that can't happen. It's sitting in our warehouse. And he was like, okay. The guy in Germany said, call back tomorrow. I'll let you know if we've got it. Lawrence called back the next day and said, had a chat. And the guy was all of a sudden Lawrence's friend. He said, yep, we've got the panel. Lawrence said, well, how do we sort this out? If you don't want to deal with customs, can you send it to my workshop and then I'll help with the custom? And he was like, yeah, sure, not a problem. We'll send it straight to you. So the next day I got sent, oh no. Then Adelaide BMW had to email the German dealership, go, please release it to this person, send it to this address. And then from there we could organize shipping. But you need to use a German shipping agent because you need to submit a document 24 hours before you send the part, which there's a 20% chance that German customs will rock up to the location that the part is getting sent from and look at the part before you pack it. And then you can send it off and they'll clear it from customs. The problem was it had already been picked up from Lawrence's. We were unaware. Adelaide BMW was unaware. And how the hell are we supposed to know? It's a weird and in my opinion, stupid system. But on the form, it said E30 rear quarter panel. And Lawrence came up with the idea of going, well, I've got some of them, brand new old stock. If they rock up, I'll just show them one of them. They didn't even rock up. The panel cleared customs and it was on express through FedEx. It took 48 hours to go from Germany to Sydney and it has taken another 96 hours to go from Sydney to Adelaide, which is ridiculous. It can go basically halfway around the world in 48 hours, but going like 16 hours by car takes four days apparently. But now we're here. The panel is in. I am terrified that this panel is the left-hand side or damaged or just a regular E30 panel. I've been told people have seen pictures of it and I've requested those pictures. No one ever sent them to me. We're just gonna drive to BMW and pray that it's the right one, pray that it's in good condition and then go destroy it by cutting it up. Like I've waited 16 months. Let's just cut it up on the same day we pick it up because there's no point waiting any longer. We've got the rest of the car ready to go. Oh. This has been stressful and this has been, uh, this, it, it's almost soured it, the whole build for me for a certain, to a certain extent. Not knowing if I would ever see this panel having spent 15 grand on the engine. 10 grand on panels, five, grand's on, five grand on seats, three grand on wheels. Like, I hope it's all worth it at the end of it. And to a certain extent, I know it will be all worth it. Like once I finish this car, 
anyone who's an E30 person is going to know it. And I'll make sure of it. And I, like, I hope the people who are watching this, who have listened to me ramble for the last couple of minutes, help me show everyone as well. Because I, anyone who's that into this car, let's find the other people who are going to be that into the car as well. All right, enough talking. The next video is going to be you seeing the panel for the first time with me. All right, we're here. I've already looked at it, I'm sorry, but it's definitely the right one because there's the fuel flap hole. That's going to be horrible noise. There's the fuel flap hole. Let's get it loaded up and back to the workshop so we can completely destroy it straight away. Let's open it up. Yes! Oh, thank fuck. Oh. Here is my brand spanking new E30 M3 right hand side rear quarter panel. And it's the right one because this is right here. I think we waste no time. And I just cut this C pillar off because why the hell not? I already know where I'm cutting. Let's just get rid of it. Waited 16 months, cut it up within an hour and a half. Oh, let's put this bad boy on the car. Outer wheel arch is on. I've tried to put you in the best viewing spot possible, but it's kind of cramped in the corner that I need to be in. Yes! Woo. Again, anyone got the M3 door, please let me know.